Well, it's rather nice that it's brightened up a bit. When I woke up this morning at about half oh, four, quarter to five, it was lashing it down, absolutely hammering it down. Looked out the window and it was just dark for miles around. Black clouds, black skies. I wasn't gonna make any pictures. No sunrise that I was hoping for. So I turned back over, got a couple of extra hours sleep and then I'm out this morning. As I was walking across, I've already seen a couple of hairs. There's one in this uh, gorse down in front of me and two have just pushed off into the back. I can also see a couple off in the distance, but I'm gonna walk along the track, see if I can find some areas that I can shoot in from and uh, start making some pictures. I'll probably start with a 600, but um, if I find one of the hairs that is a bit more comfortable with me, I might switch out to the wide angle and start working on that. With the overcast skies like they are today, getting a little bit of break in the cloud every so often, bit of sunshine through, might make for a nice background with a wide angle. So we'll see how it goes. But um, I kind of want to keep the 600 kitted up at minimum on one of my cameras, just because that marsh harrier will fly past. And I know that I'll put the wide angle on and miss it again. That is just a photographer's luck. But uh, right now I'm gonna wander that way and see if I can pick up a couple of hairs to get started. So a lot of the hairs are over the back in the gorse. I don't really want to go traipsing all the way through just to get to them. I'd much rather wait for them to come out into this section here. Much better grass, much better um, backgrounds for those portraits. So I'm probably going to wait it out. But I thought whilst I'm here, I'll talk to you about what's in my little bag that I brought with me today. You know. Obviously the cabin is only over there and I can go back and get anything I need, but when you're working and situations are unfolding in front of you pretty rapidly, I want to be able to access certain bits of gear. And as much as I'm going after the portraits with the 600 mil today, um, I do also want some wide angle stuff with me. And so um, in the bag, it's just a few bits and bobs that I know I might need. The first being my new wide angle lens. This is the, 17 to 28 mil 2.8. I was really excited when this lens came out um, as a wide angle option for me, mainly because of two key things about it. Firstly, that wide open aperture. I love 2.8 glass. You know, if I'm working in low light conditions, anything like that allows me to be a bit more creative with depth of field. That is absolutely excellent. Um, and secondly, it's the close focus. The close focus on this going down to 0.19 meters means that I can get incredibly close to my subject. That means at 28 mil, you're getting a very good reproduction ratio. And at 17, you can get nearer for those more dramatic wide angles. You know, the 14 to 24 is a lens that loads of people absolutely love. But when it comes to wildlife and doing wide angle wildlife, because it's a 0.28 meter close focus rather than 0.19 of this, um, you just can't get as near to, to really fill the frame, especially with smaller subjects. Um, so yeah, that's why I really wanted to go after this. Used it a couple of times over the last couple of nights and uh, it's looking to be a really good lens. Focuses very quickly, silent as well, that is absolutely lovely. Um, and of course, it's gonna be great for video as well as still, so it's really great. Um, might even be able to use this as a bit of a vlogging lens at times. The other good thing about it is, of course, you can just use normal filters on it. I know that the 1424 has been updated uh, to now use normal filters, but they are quite large in their size. Um, so it is just great. And of course, it's really small. Um, that means that when I'm out, you know, with loads of other gear, um, it's just really not too much to bring with me. Um, that is great. Uh, I've also got in here, my better beamer for the flash just helps throw my flash a bit further. Don't know if I am gonna use that and flash to go with it. This is an SB700 that has a burn hole in the front from the last time I used my better beamer and forgot that of course, a magnifying glass looking straight in the sun for backlit shots will burn a hole straight through the front of your flash. So I won't forget that again. Um, other than that in here, I do have my Lee filters just in case we get some really contrasty skies and I may want to like use an ND grad, just drop them down a bit. Um, we'll see how that works. Obviously I've got the adapters for using it with the lenses. Um, and the only other thing is I have my backup microphone that really is to go on the Z9 um, 
get some really nice shots and this just makes such great sound um, that's really good to have. Oh, and a flash cable because if I want to get the SB700 off camera when I'm using the wide angle, you know, it just gives you more of a interesting lighting options. You can bring it out to the side, bring it up and over. You just get a much more natural light to work with. So that is in there too. But um, yeah, we'll see if that all works out and we get some shots, spare batteries, memory cards, all of that jazz, of course. Um, but yeah, right now, what I'm gonna do, probably just wait it out. I might mooch down a little bit, see if I can find a hair somewhere to get a first few pictures but I'm not too worried, the light is very consistent and I've probably got hours and hours to work today that really is quite nice. I'm not in a rush, just gonna take my time, look for shots and I wanna work the areas that are the most, you know, photogenic. I can push in, go into the gorse, find the hairs, but if it's not a great shot, there's not really much point to doing that. And anyway, it's just lovely to be here. Did see a marsh harrow right off in the distance, I'm still got the 600 hooked up just in case he flies by. Yeah, there's just so much out here that's just lovely to see and you can just hear the sounds of nature. So I don't mind sitting around for a couple of hours until I get my first picture. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, and I'd much rather be in the right place to get a good shot when everything comes together. But uh, yeah, looks rather nice. Oh, I mean, I do have an umbrella and um, waterproof covers for my other gear in the front and my mini Jitsu tripod that is super handy when I'm doing the wide angle because sometimes if I'm got the camera trying to move the flash it's very hard to keep it in the right place so with this little thing I can pop that on my camera put it in get it right and then move the flash and press the button just means that I'm not trying to do four things with two hands that gets a little bit difficult so yeah that's in there as well um, just in case I need that and yeah you know, having a little bag with you just means I can make a little, little little base, work from there. I mean, I won't carry it around when I'm trying to do the wide angle stuff because it gets a bit in the way. You know, with it on your back, trying to crawl through, it just doesn't work. But um, just saves me wandering back to the cabin the whole time to get any gear I need. It's rather good. But right, I'm gonna find somewhere to set up and wait it out and uh, oh, talk to you when there's something to talk about. Right, so I'm in position, ready to shoot. Got two hairs out in front of me. I've moved back up to the cabin a little bit more, just because this area is just, it seems to be just a bit more popping with activity. Um, one off to my right hand side, who's just behind the gorse, has been filming him, he's doing a bit of preening. And then there's one up behind me, tucked in here as well. This whole area is usually quite alive with the hairs. They move from the back to this bit, mooch around here before they come out onto the track. Um, and my position here is I can shoot them between the gorse. Um, there's some really nice yellow clumps that might make for some good backgrounds, but then also I can roll out onto the track to shoot um, when they're moving down. But it tends to be more of an afternoon evening thing, so I'll probably be there later. Having a slight amount of rain coming in, um, but that's all right, I'm geared up for it. And to be honest, if I get a bit of rain, it might add to the shots, you know, stopping down and dropping down to like a 60th of a second, getting some of those streaks of rain might be really nice. Um, you know, and also the good thing about those sort of conditions is once the hairs get really wet, then they start to kind of shake themselves off, move about, um, do a bit of preening after. Um, so again, it, it leads to that more interesting activity and a chance to get something that's a little bit different. Still got loads of birds kicking about, obviously the gulls that nest here, but um, there's a lot of linnets here too. Um, just had one up on the bush over there that was quite nice. Um, they're slowly moving closer. And now that I'm settled in one spot, low on the ground, I'm hoping that they might come along some of the bushes in front of me. You never know, you might get a shot like that. Of course, I'm still waiting on my marsh harrier who hasn't been around as much today. Um, the wind's not as strong as it was yesterday that he was kind of buffeting in and hanging in. So um, that might be why he's not as consistent on this edge of, of the island. But uh, fingers crossed I'll see him at some point over the next couple of days. But I'm just gonna chill here and uh, hopefully as the hairs come out, move towards me, start doing a bit of preening, I can uh, get a few shots.
So I've just been crawling up to this hair. And you're now seeing the view from 17 mil. It's probably taken me about an hour to crawl to this point. Well, that was a pretty epic way to end my morning. After sitting here for about half an hour, 45 minutes, the two hares that I was watching were just really calm. One off to my right hand side, he was asleep, spread out. Uh, that was really cool. And then uh, the one off to the left was just mooching around, feeding under the gorse. Took the decision to come off the 600, mount up the wide angle on the Z9, and just really slowly make my way across to the gorse crawling on my front, just moving a little bit at a time, inching my way closer, and eventually I got super close to the brown hair that um, was over here. Moving through the gorse, just chewing away, um, picking around, just so incredible to be so close. You know, I was shooting video a lot of the time because I wanted to show you guys what it's really like to be like that close to brown hairs. Um, it was just immense. And then as I was moving and following one, another one came around the back and then was feeding up on some gorse. So I got some shots of that as well. That was really cool. Just switching between 17 mil and 28 mil to fill the frame uh, and get a few different angles, but just rather epic. You know, just, it's always a privilege to be that close to wildlife. Took my Gore-Tex off because I was getting a bit hot, but of course now it's about to rain again. But uh, one thing I've got to shout out to all you wildlife photographers is get yourself some knee pads. Um, probably picked my pair up about a year and a half ago. They go inside my Fowl Raven trousers and they are just the best. For stuff like this, when you're crawling along, moving through foliage, you've got sharp sticks, sharp stones sticking in your knees. They are an absolute lifesaver. So they make me so more comfortable when I'm doing this. But uh, now as it's starting to rain, um, most of the hair's moved off. Gonna head in for a bit of lunch and then uh, get out this afternoon uh, to, yeah, probably work on some portraits and maybe some wide angles. Didn't take too many stills a minute ago, I was mainly doing video um, because just the lighting conditions weren't perfect for still frames. So uh, I'll probably will look at working on those in the evenings when you know you get a bit of low sun in the background, anything like that. But uh, yeah, as it's starting to rain, I'm gonna lob this gear back in the bag and uh, make my way into the cabin for a spot of lunch, I think. But what an epic way to end the morning. So this afternoon, I'm back out with the hares and I've got my Gore-Tex on, it's been raining, but I've got a nice group of three hares out in front of me who are really chill, just feeding, mooching around, really nice. They're currently in kind of an area that is a little bit busy, got to work through the, the kind of gorse bushes to get some shots. But um, I was kind of hoping that rain would be a little bit heavier and I could get some shots of the streaking down, stopping down to a 50th of a second, F8, just to really see the motion in the rain. But it's, um, it's kind of dried off a bit and it, it's not as heavy as I kind of wish it was. The hairs are slowly moving across, so I'm hoping they're going to come out onto the track and I can just sneak my way out and get those clean portraits. I'm still after that absolute perfect clean portrait of a hair coming straight towards me with a 600 mil. So fingers crossed we might get that a little bit later. I don't think looking at the forecast and looking at the sky, we're going to get like an epic sunset or anything like that for backlit shots. So uh, I'm going to keep working the long lens, and shooting those portraits. And if I do get something really confining, I've still got the wide in the bag. Of course, everything waterproofed up got my wildlife watching supplies all in one cover just keeping the whole lens nice and dry everything of course is you know as it's meant to be weatherproof professionally sealed all that sort of stuff but you know when you're out for hours in the rain it's just best to throw this on just keep it all nice and dry um, of course it does blend me in a little bit but these guys aren't too worried
Well, I certainly got my ass for the rain. It's been lashing it down for 20 minutes now. The three hares that are out in front of me have been showing really well, moving around and feeding, had some cracking portraits as they worked their way towards me. And the flexibility of having the 600 mil with a 1.4 teleconverter has been an absolute godsend. Having it built into the lens is brilliant, especially for conditions like this. You know, in the past, my 300 2.8, I would have never been taking a teleconverter off and putting it back on when it's hammering it down like this. You don't want to get moisture inside your camera, anything like that that's going to damage it. But of course, because it's built into the lens and I've got that really simple switch, I can just pop it down. I'm up to 840 mil, allowing me to really concentrate on those details and get some close in shots and then flick it off again. And I'm back to 600 at F4 if I want a faster shutter speed or to kind of, you know, just to get a little bit of a wider field of view, working great. And of course the working distance is brilliant with the 600 mil, something that I'm still trying to get used to. I always set up a bit too close. I've got to get used to having a super long lens, but this has been excellent. Really happy with a couple of the pictures over the last 20 minutes. And it's just lovely to see the hairs so close, but I have spotted two of them out on the track it's far more open over there, really nice background. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave these guys now that they're tucked in the foliage and they're kind of hunkered down and see if I can get close to the ones on the track because they'd really lead to some really, really nice clean portraits. Well, that was definitely worth the crawl. Really glad that I left the other hairs and came down to the track. Had a good five, 10 minutes of a hair preening in front of me, 600 mil, perfect for that sort of shot. I could creep in, still have loads of working distance to get the images I was after. Really lovely little set of shots and perfect to end the day on. Really enjoyed today being around with the hares and the conditions of this afternoon. Yes, I haven't had too much great light, but the rain has just given me something a little bit different. It's always great to work with the conditions that mother nature throws at you. Really hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, and if you have, please like and subscribe for future content. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, be sure to drop them in the comments below. More than happy to help you out with anything you've got questions about. And of course, as always guys, get out there, enjoy your wildlife photography, and I'll see you soon.